So let's now take a look at performing a forward and backward scan with an example where we have dummy links. Now, if you want to have that detailed breakdown of what a forward and backward scan is and all the words that we use here, uh, have a look at my previous forward and backward scan video. But I just quickly want to go through an example with dummy links to show you what we do with the dummy link. So a forward scan, we start our start node and the earliest possible start time for task A is zero units of time. So we now look at here, task B and task C both require task A to be completed and that's going the earliest possible time we can start those tasks is at two units of time. Now, when we're looking at the next step though, we've got to be mindful that this particular node does have two tasks connecting to it, it has task C and task B. So we actually need to calculate this node first before we can calculate this node because we need to know what is the earliest possible time that we could start up here with completing task B, which is obviously going to be six units of time before we can commence are any task that's coming out of this particular node. So that's task D, task E, and also task F. Because you gotta remember that task F has like requires both task B and C to be completed, and that's the reason why we have this dummy link here. So now when we've got this particular node here, we have to read this dummy link as a task that has zero units of time. So when we're looking at the earliest possible start time for F, we have to consider both C and B being completed. However, C and B can be completed independently of each other. So, you know, task C can be completed uh, as early as five units of time. So F could be theoretically started as early as five. However, we've also got to consider task B being completed because F does require B as well. And task B can't be completed to six units of time. So we can't actually start task F here until six units of time due to task B. And that's how we work with the dummy link on the forward scan. Now let's continue. So over here, we can start tasks J and K as early as eight units of time. And then we look at task M here, we need both J and K completed. So despite J being completed after 12 units, we still can't complete it without task K, but K can be completed independently of J. So K can be completed as early as 13 units of time. So now we can start task M. However, I need to go through the top to be able to identify this. It's just an interesting note that um, task J does have slack time here and it's obvious that it does because task K connects to the same node and takes longer. So this is something to be able to identify very quickly with these where there's an obvious piece of slack time no matter what. So looking back at the top here, uh, I can't do this yet because I need this particular node with that connection. So looking at this, task G and I could be started as early as seven units of time, completing task E. And now we can have a look at this particular node. So task D will be eight in total. Uh, task G though will be 11. So we can't start task eight, uh, H into at least 11 units of time. And then over here, we need to consider this. So task I could be completed as early as nine units. However, L requires H as well. So H will be 16 units of time. So the earliest we can start here is at 16 units of time. And then the overall completion of the project well, would be 20 units for task L and as early as 16 for task M. So the earliest that we can complete is at 20 units of time. And that there is our forward scan. So we've worked out a minimum completion time for the project is 20 units of time. Now the backward scan, if you remember, is where we look at the latest possible time that we could start a task without delaying the overall project. So if we look at task L, for example, we can't start task L any later than uh, 16 units of time. So we start at 17 units of time, it takes four units, well, it's gonna finish later. So here it's pretty simple, it's 16. However, task M, as we look at down here, it's not gonna be the same as the earliest start time because we can actually start task M as late as 17 units without actually delaying the overall project, indicating that there's slack time for task M and it's not a critical task to this project. 
Now, looking at this particular node where we've got two connecting to it, we've got to remember that we're taking the smallest value of the two. So the earliest, the, uh, sorry, the latest we could possibly start J um, would be at 13 units of time. However, the latest we could possibly start K would be at 12 units of time. So we always take the smaller of the two values and we put it in here. But we've got to remember that task J does have that extra hour of slack time compared to task K. So task J has five hours of slack time here where task K only has the four hours of slack time, given that the earliest possible time that we could start either of them would be at eight units. Now, looking down here, we've got to do this one first because we've got two connecting sort of to here. Oh, actually, no, we've got to do this one first, sorry, because we're going backwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the latest that we could ta start task H would be at 11, otherwise would uh, delay the overall task. And now we could have a look at this particular um, one. I forgot we were doing the backward scan. So the latest we could start task G would be at seven. The latest we could start task I with only E being required uh, would be 14. We always put the smaller of the two values. So we're gonna put seven here. So you can see task I actually has considerable amounts of slack time here um, when we're looking to calculate the slack time task I because it can be, you know, the latest we could start it would be at nine, uh, oh, sorry, at 14, but the earliest we could be starting is at seven. So there's seven hours of slack time for task I. Now looking at the next one, we've got to consider both of these two. Um, which is going to be the latest we could start task D would be at nine. The latest we could start task E would be at six. So the smaller of the two values is the six and that's what we put here. Now you'll notice that I, oh, hang on. No, 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 there is something that's very important here. I did this one too early. The reason why I'm gonna point this, this is a common mistake that um, I do see people make with this and I just made it myself. Um, when we're working with the backward scan, oops, that did not work how it needed to. When we're working with the backward scan, um, it's very important that we look at all the um, connections that connect backwards to it and there's actually three connections. So I can't do this one until I've actually worked this one out first because we've got to incorporate the uh, dummy link as well. So. Task F, the latest we could start task F would be 10 without delaying the whole project. So, oops, hit the wrong button. Uh, so we would put 10 here. And now we can actually look at this and it's not gonna make any difference in this particular example, but there are times that it will make a difference, so be very careful. So remember, this is a zero unit um, connection. So we gotta consider as a unit, uh, sorry, as a zero. So 10 take zero will end up at 10. So the earliest possible time that we could start due to task F, or the latest possible time I should say, is at 10 units. However, as we established earlier that this task E uh, can't be started any later than six units of time. So that's still the smallest, so that's what we'd put in here. But just be very careful in the backward scan where your dummy link is because we do have to consider that option as well when we're doing this backward scan. So now the next one, uh, the latest we can start B is at two. Uh, the latest we can start C is at seven. Two is obviously smaller. And then we've done it correctly because we've right back to our zero back at the start node. Now, when we're looking at this uh, to identify the actual critical path, we've uh, we've got to look and think through it because this helps us identify the critical path. But we've got a bit of a, you know, a bit of a mess here that all these are actually the same as each other. So we've got to look at which ones were the critical ones as we went through because we did identify that there was slack time at task D and considerable amounts of slack time at task I. So task D and I aren't critical despite them connecting between two nodes that have an, the earliest and latest, latest start times that I've written here the same. So A is pretty simple to work out. B is pretty simple to work out. We did identify that E was the one that caused this critical uh, task. Then it was task G. Then it was task H. Then it was task L. So if we're looking at our critical path, it would be A to B to uh, E to H and to L. So we'll just put this here. Critical path. A to B to E to G to H to L. And then a minimum completion time. E 
is going to be 20 units of time. And once again, we would usually have context to the question, which will identify what units we're actually dealing with. So that's how we perform a forward and backward scan uh, when we have a network with a dummy link included. Thank you.